Welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm bringing you the haul from Chicago. Now Chicago is an absolute mecca for thrifting. I have not even touched the surface. I'm definitely not familiar with the city. Uh, just am really just the stomping grounds around where my family lives and has lived is where I have um, ventured off to. I've never even been to a Goodwill at the uh, in Chicago so I to my channel thank you so much for being here I have a quick update on the rings that I showed in my last haul in the mega gold jewelry jar I did do some research on this one and I am 100% that this is 1926 because I looked up the name Folger the company name is Folger and I actually found a catalog and most I don't know when they closed down but it is definitely um deco period i think they started around the 1900s and most of the things that i've seen for sale have been from the 1920s and you can just kind of tell by the style and yes i said i would scrap it but i was i really you know immediately said no because jewelry jewelry value always trumps scrapping anything and um, i don't even think i want to sell them at this point i'm absolutely in love with both of them i'm wearing them both today and i'm wearing my old signet ring that my mother bought me when i was in high school so i do love signet rings i love id bracelets they're my absolute favorite thing first thing i want to show you is i guess i'll work my way through the brooches here and then work my way around i love this little turtle pin here brooch it's a small one it's not very big i haven't tested it for sterling or anything i was kind of intrigued by the color of the metal so i'm not too sure about that but i was more enthralled with this fabulous enamel work don't you think that is quite beautiful I think it's just lovely look at that cute face on that turtle it's just so pretty and i'm not even a turtle fan so to speak I don't dislike them not the way I dislike frogs but I don't <laughs> especially in jewelry but I do love this one and lately I've been finding a lot of turtles isn't he precious anyway that was that one I think it's about an inch long it's an inch and a half long that is an inch and a half and I thought it was really pretty I never leave any laurel birch behind I've actually had this brooch before and I've sold it and I think I re represented it as African, but I'm not sure if it's Egyptian or African. It's got a very interesting motif. It kind of reminds me of African women, but I'm not sure. And of course, it's signed in the back, Laurel Birch. And there's her signature there. Very pretty. I'll have to look it up and see. I wish, does anybody know if Laurel Birch has a a book i would love to own that book they may and of course you know i collect 1928 i absolutely adore it usually only the 70s and very very early 80s am i fond of they really diversified and and changed their quality so i don't collect it after around the mid 80s and one thing to look for in genuine 1928 especially in the brooches they do not sign but this was indeed their signature and i do have their book and i've been trying to do my collection video and kind of talk to you about it with the book review as well that was definitely the way they decided to stamp their jewelry and that and their brooches and that is with the little swirl stamp so if you ever see anything that looks like 1928 know that they had definitely set the standard in the 70s for the retro victorian and deco pieces and a lot of people when they did uh, rise to fame and even surpassed monet and napier in sales in many department stores they were highly imitated so definitely look for that swirl signature on their brooches if it doesn't have it you're not possessing 1928 and it's still very reasonable but it is definitely collectible i i do um especially like i said the early 70s are the ones that the collectors seek all right, this is polymer clay. I think I mentioned before how popular polymer clay is these days. Artisans are doing amazing work with polymer clay. 
and I just love this one. He is so cute, even though he's a frog. He's just a simple um, C clasp there, but he's just darling. He reminds me of some of the ones I saw at um, one of our museums. They had an exhibit of the Amazonian creatures, and they had the most exotic frogs. So beautiful, though, aren't they? Then I found not one, but two of these Blackamoor brooches. And I'm not sure if they had rings inside their ears at one time. I almost feel like they should, but there's nothing in both of them. And these were $2.99. They were, I almost forgot to bring them to the table today. I just remembered that I had forgotten about, that I had these out. And they were in my purse all month let me see, I went around the, what, I think around the 16th of last month. So they've been in my purse in a little tiny bag, of course. For the longest time that I almost forgot about them, I think they're amazing. I love Blackamoor. I think it's such a beautiful genre. It does not spare any controversy, as a lot of jewelry does. But um, I wish more people would read up on about read up on it and not just make judgments. So that's a, a beautiful selection here. I think they're really well done. I do like the addition of the blue rhinestones as well. I found this amazing cloisonne bracelet, vintage bangle, clamper bangle. It's very, very well preserved, I might add. It's really in great condition. Look at that. And I love the fact that the unicorn is not white. Usually you see the unicorns in white. Look at that beautiful work. Really done nicely. I love the oval shape as well. It looks beautiful. Hope I wasn't too close for you. I don't know why I got so close a minute ago. I think I was showing you the ring, wasn't I? The um, class ring. So yeah, that is gorgeous. I love that one. Then I just kind of fell in love with this little pink thing, even though I thought it might be too big for me. And it really is, but it's so pretty. It reminded me a little bit of Bakelite. I knew it wasn't, but uh, it was $3. And it's a larger size, so it's not even going to fit me, but pink. I mean, who can resist? Barbie pink, bubblegum pink. And then in that tapered design, I just thought it was so pretty. Really like that. All right, then I found this beautiful, I think it's stainless, and it is mother of pearl. It is pink and white mother of pearl. So beautifully done. I mean, look at that inlay work. And it's not very big. That's another thing I loved about it. Because many times these bangles are so big on me, especially the um, modern ones. The vintage ones I really love because they're made a little smaller. So I found that one as well. I loved it. thought it was just fantastic. Then I found an amazing Whiting and Davis. Just gorgeous with a piece of hematite there. Oh, look, you can see me in that. And what I really loved about it, not only the fact that it had that it was done in silver tone, because that's kind of rare for Whiting and Davis bracelets. I don't see them much in silver tone. It's in pretty good condition. I don't really see any wear on it. And uh, I love that wonderful design there. All of that beautiful embossed metal fabrication there is gorgeous. I love the fact that it still has its safety chain. That's kind of a rarity as well. And there's the signature there. I hope you can see it. Now, you may know them from handbags. They do the mesh bags. As a matter of fact, I just found me a fabulous mesh bag at Goodwill, a little um, sunglass or eyeglasses case. So that is the mark there, Whiting and Davis. These, I remember buying Whiting and Davis uh, handbag accessories, you know, things like cigarette cases, and I used to smoke at that time. 
and lipstick cases and key rings at one of our pharmacies. We had, I love that pharmacy. That pharmacy had amazing jewelry. And they used to sell Whiting and Davis. There. Then I locked out and found this amazing Tasco piece. And this is a beautiful modernist design. And I called it very clearly Tasco because it's actually stamped Tasco. It does not just have the T mark. It actually says Tasco in the circle in the circle there and it's also signed by the artisan and it looks like an RNG I believe this is already sold at my auction I wanted to try and get this um, filmed and ready to go because I know she's waiting for it and um, it sold a couple of days ago so definitely getting that out to you Miss Iris you're going to adore it I really love the way it sits it almost looks like you're wearing a few bangles just a little heads up on Tasco again you know why I don't refer to all things as Tasco when they have the T mark because they're highly counterfeited ha highly highly imitated and um, so when they say Tasco I'm I'm just over the moon about it but not only that, also be very wary that uh, just because something is Tasco, I've had a, a wonderful piece I picked up on eBay, and I misread the, the description. This was years ago. I misread the description. She clearly said silver tone, and it was a beautiful, beautiful piece. Uh, I think it had abalone and mother of pearl. It was just gorgeous, and I never expected it to be silver tone it was marked Tosco and it was it was clearly silver tone it was a, it was a costume piece but it was gorgeous you could see the artistry in it regardless but um, definitely just be, don't be surprised if you ever see something marked Tosco and it is not sterling on the other hand there is also deception for example this this one is marked 925. I've tested it at least 10 times. I got. I think this is the one I paid up for. I may have paid 17 or 14 for it. But I think it's still beautiful. I love the shape of it. It's interesting. It's kind of squared off, so it falls beautifully. And it's very clearly marked Mexico 925. And it is a really nice one. It is made very nicely and I cannot, even when I scratched it, I couldn't get the, it didn't, it didn't scratch up brassy, but it did not hold the acid and um, definitely, there it is there, Mexico 925. Just be very careful, just because it says 925 or just because it says Mexico silver, or just because someone says, oh, I thought it was silver, I didn't test it, I just assumed, you know, just, to, again, trust but verify. That's my, my mantra. Trust but verify. Trust but verify. But regardless, like I said, this is gorgeous anyway. I'll put it with my faux jade and my faux silver, and it looks like a million bucks. But I won't try to fool anyone and tell them it's sterling just because it's mark sterling i remember quite clearly visiting um and um they were selling bracelets on the beach and every little corner you could think of and they were all marked dosco 925 and they were all fake <laughs> and they weren't you know and i think they were like 20 dollars a piece so they weren't exactly cheap and then another time i even went into a uh, jewelry market well, it was a market and they had several jewelry stalls and I was sold a beautiful zodiac ring and guys swore up and down it was gold and marked gold and not gold so just be careful as with anything okay and here's another one this is why we're getting to the story of of things that can fool you this one is marked Mexico as well I fell in love with this amazing cobblestone inlay that's just amazing. The abalone is beautiful. This is a beautiful bracelet regardless. But it is not sterling. Again, marked 925. And this is marked Mexico. There's the 925. Clearly it's alpaca and not 925. Did not pass my test. But boy, did it pass the aesthetic value here. 
because that cobblestone inlay is amazing in its own right and that abalone is gorgeous I love the hinge I have a real pet peeve with some Mexican bracelet and I'm, I don't mean to bash on Mexican jewelry nobody loves Mexican jewelry more than I do honestly but there are some some pieces that um, they have like a button hinge or they have a little box hinge and they are very very flimsy if you lean your hand on a counter it can open on some of these so now this one is very very secure look how pretty that is that's just a gorgeous bracelet and it's just a very very secure lock there which I love absolutely adore so like I said when it's good it's really good it's really good it's artisan it's clearly marked Dosco in the circle there 925 beautifully smooth 100% sterling on that one tested and verified then I found this one and this one surprised me because I didn't think this one was sterling this one was not marked but I decided it was so beautiful I would risk it and take it home and test it and this one did come out sterling I don't see the mark all I see is community and that I believe is the uh, the flatware maker if I'm not mistaken this one also had like a little doggy paw there maybe it's their hallmark I'm not sure but it's gorgeous and this one has also sold at my auction last couple of days ago so that one is on the way to you as well thank you Miss Lynn just gorgeous very heavy very nice this is a gorgeous piece you know it's interesting but when you are a jewelry trader <laughs> and a collector there are polar feelings one is happiness to to sell it and the other is sadness to see it go but you cannot hold everything I know that and this is going to be beautiful on whoever wears it in the future isn't that beautiful and again not marked took my chances I thought I would test it didn't think it would be possible but it was indeed it is indeed sterling okay then this fabulous ring this one is actually marked by the artisan it's I think this is around 1970s I saw a lot of carved turquoise in those days and beautifully set with the sawtooth bezel wonderful cut work on that and just a really pretty color of turquoise I think it's about a size seven look how it's really a nugget and then they just made it perfectly for the setting carved it perfectly cut it perfectly really beautiful and I will show you the signature it's also Mark Zuni W Quan W Quan W Quan Zuni really gorgeous piece so that was a nice one I like that a lot then let's make our way down to these bracelets here I just fell in love with this combo I love this I uh, forget what it's called is it brushed oh it's got a special name for this finish I had an engagement ring with this finish it was so pretty it was very popular in the 70s and I really like this one too it's a black enameled with some diamond cutting around it as well I thought they might have been Monet but they're not marked they're just beautiful oh this one is marked this one is not marked this one is I just noticed the mark let's see what it says looks like it says Taiwan no it says Germany cool beans all right I didn't even know that this actually says Germany there it is Germany wow isn't that pretty I love it and they came together they were bound together with a little um, a little plastic thing and I just thought they were so pretty together so so pretty tell me what they call this I forget I know it's got a special name this finish was just signature 70s or as I like to say sumamente 70s gorgeous love those and then oh I found the copper I love this 
I love this for several reasons. One is that it is small. I literally have to struggle a bit to put it on, but I love, love, love that because you can sleep with it. And I do sleep with copper to alleviate some, some of my arthritic pain. Look at that. And I just, it looks so pretty when it's not so big, right? Look at that gorgeous diamond cutting. I absolutely love it. Of course, I may sell it as well. I, you know, that's what I do. It's always interesting to me. Well, it may not be interesting to you, but I find it interesting. <laughs> And my personality that I will totally fall in love with something and love it to death and then think, I think I'm going to sell it. And it's the challenge of finding another one. I, I think I've figured myself out. It's the challenge of finding yet another fantastic piece. I find this absolutely beautiful. No, copper is not a noble metal. No, it's not a precious metal. But it is a beautiful metal. And I really love it. So I got that one. I don't pay, think I paid over $10 for it. I love it. Then I found this cuff. And this is beautiful. It has a little Native American vibe for me. This one was $7. It's still there. $7.20. And uh, I don't see any kind of signature. But let me double check because I forgot. It's been a while and I haven't lifted the sticker oh here's this thing it says solid copper <laughs> that's what it says solid copper there in the middle and this one's gorgeous too mixed with your silver and your turquoise I think it's beautiful together just amazing so that's another beautiful copper fine gorgeous design on that too I really love it. And then I fell in love with this bangle here. I mentioned in my auction when I presented it last time that um, I don't know if you're familiar with the fashion house or if you're familiar with Biba. It is. It was a fashion house in London, I believe. Somewhere in the UK, of course, like all trends that started in the 60s and um, Biba is B-I-B-A. So it was an entire trend of everything from cosmetics to dresses to shoes. And this totally reminds me, it totally gives me Biba. Look that up and there was even some famous models that came out of that era that I still associate today with that. Um, but anyway, I love it. I think it's so cool. Even the colors are amazing. Corals and turquoise and cream. Just a beautiful piece. It's not flimsy in the least, and it's in great condition. And for all I know, it could be modern. But uh, that is what it's giving me. Biba. B-I-B-A. Love this heart. It is huge. Silver tone. I would love that with a strand of pearls and just have the pearls kind of strewn through the middle there. I think they would look fantastic. Great condition as well. I almost expected this one to say sterling. And I thought this said something right there, but I think it's just a little smudge. I have seen some really high polished sterling like this. Isn't that beautiful though? I think it's pretty. The design around it is like a twisting chain. And then some kind of little ridges there. It's really pretty. And um, Looks like it's a little bit of uh, residue. I need to get that cleaned off because that residue will eat at your jewelry. Then I found this little mask and I thought this was really pretty. I tested it for Bakelite. It's not Bakelite. Could even be lacquer. I'm not sure. But I thought it was really cool. Sort of a tribal mask there. And then, oh, these beautiful bangles. I fell in love with these. I thought they had a really cute uh, Bakelite look to them, just a fun look. They're probably contemporary, but they're beautiful together. I think they're just super fun with a white dress. Wouldn't that be perfect? And I also like them kind of paired up. Let me do the red and black together. I think that's pretty together. 
citrusy colors together. And I think these were a dollar a piece or two dollars a piece, I don't recall completely. They were sold separately, but I thought they were super cute. So those were also a fabulous Chicago find. And then I found these, I never can resist a good hoop sterling or otherwise and these are a fabulous closure here too these do need a good polish on them i started to polish them these are marked by the artisan these are marked rb or br and it doesn't look like the banana republic mark it looks like two married letters there br925 and these have tested positive they have fabulous uh, closures. I really like that. And then, of course, you know I'm very much into the acrylic. I won't say Pyrex. <laughs> Lucite. I figured out, and I mentioned several times, the reason I always say Pyrex when I'm trying to say Lucite is because plexiglass is the other name for Lucite. Lucite is the trade name, the company name by DuPont, but the name is actually plexiglass but anyway these are gorgeous they have a holographic look to them they are so pretty neon green again probably two inch hoops here two and a half inches on these because people are just throwing on a little touch of neon jewelry for uh, for a little pop of color then these are also acrylic they're gorgeous they're pink they're marled these are well made they have a really nice little post of gold tone probably about two inches as well and i like the way they're actually twisted a little bit here so they kind of circle the ear so that they really show they have a presence when you turn to the side they kind of orient themselves quite nicely on the ear so that was another fabulous pickup in Chicago. Then these, I love the Monstera Deliciosa. I have one taking up my entire office and she's just so happy there. So this one just made me fall in love. Now I did notice they had these little white specks and I thought, what is that? Why do they have that? So I started rubbing on it and the little white specks were obviously someone's attempt to design <laughs> so i'm going to rub them completely off and just enjoy them in their natural green state because yeah i think someone was just playing with some white out or something and decided to maybe put some dew drops or something on them i'm not sure but i like them plain so i will definitely clean those up and enjoy them i absolutely adore these i love all the plant motifs and that Monstera Deliciosa is one of my faves. All right, another fabulous acrylic Lucite. These are really done nicely. They have the design on the inside. Again, I don't know, maybe someone did this on their own. I don't know, but it was a nice project. I think they did a great job. You can even see a little glitter coming through. They may have just done the old nail polish craft night. God knows I've done that too. I love them. It. Oh, I got to show you the bag. <laughs> I always, every time I go to Chicago, you know, it's a very uh, big on bringing your own bag and uh, that kind of thing. In, in Chicago, they usually will charge you for a bag or they don't have any bags. So I always wind up buying either a cosmetic bag or some kind of bag. But I bought this vintage Pierre Cardin. It's huge. It's so big. I probably won't even be able to show it to you. Let me see. Let me see. There it is. It's, well, it's, let me see. Let me measure this thing. Oh my gosh. This thing is 14 inches long. It's a fabulous 70s holdover. It's 17 inches long. It's Pierre Cardin. It's pure leather, absolute leather all over, including the strap. And when I bought it, I was with my grandson when I bought it because my granddaughter went to school that day. But when I got home, my granddaughter says, that's a really pretty purse, Grandma. <laughs> she, I was like, you like it? She said, yes. So, and it's just a flat envelope clutch. Of course, you can take off 
the strap, which is a short, classic shoulder strap. No crossbodies back then. Look what I paid for it. Unreal. Hinge closure. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. There's the label there. Pierre Cardin, New York, Paris. And it's got like a little ultra sway. It's super clean inside. So that's where I ported the jewelry. And yeah, a vintage Pierre Cardin out of Chicago. There's still more. Wow, I almost forgot these beautiful pieces here. These are genuine pearls. Look at that amazing orient on those pearls. You can even see a slight differentiation on the color. This one's a little bit more champagne. Amazing. I have not tested this. I don't think it's gold. But uh, I think it's just gold tone. It's got, I don't know if it's intended to have a little bit of a kind of downward there, but it's very dimensional. Look at that handle there, whatever it's called. It's just so beautiful. I can't wait to wear it. Love it. Look at those beautifully prong set, genuine pearls. Gorgeous vintage piece. It's beautiful. Chico's, I believe this is. Look at this. This is so pretty. It looks like some kind of an archaeological revival piece. It has the color of Morganite acrylic over a design that looks kind of like, um, like a beetle, actually. But I think it's actually a floral motif. And then here it's got sort of an opalescent glass rhinestone. And there is the maker there. Yeah, there's the maker, Chico's. So that one, oh my gosh, and it is long. It is a long bib. I may wear this today. Oh, I just think it's gorgeous. Chico's is so beautifully done, isn't it? Look at the construction on that. Oh, look, it's even got designs in the back and the signature in the back. So I guess it's kind of a lotus flower, right? Beautiful, beautiful Chico's. I love the way they did this at the top too. Then I got these, I believe these are vintage, sort of, um, it's interesting because everything is going on inside this tube. It's like the um, lamp work, right? Possibly Murano, not sure possibly Austrian. Love the post as well. They even did an incredible job on the post. I actually thought these were encrusted with rhinestones or crystals and it's just cut work. That's all it is, is fabrication. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes, I was disappointed that some of the pieces were not sterling as stated, but it's not surprising. I've talked about that many times. Mexican jewelry is amazing. When you see their finest, you know it's their finest. But be careful, just like any other enterprise, there's going to be deception. And um, you just have to check everything. Doesn't take away from this particular piece, in my opinion. I still think this is amazing. I think they should have just left it stamped Mexico and not try to, to deceive because look at that beautiful cobblestone inlay. And uh, so definitely a fabulous, fabulous haul. Again, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed this haul. Give me a thumbs up whether you enjoyed it or not. It's always the right thing to do. And click that notification bell if you will so you never, ever miss another video. Thanks for stopping in. Bye-bye.